Irene Noli is a Norwegian visual artist and sculptor living and working in Oslo and in Hestrand, Sweden. Hestrand. She works with uh, ceramic sculptures and larger scale works, where she, among other themes, works with animal and human hybrids in various degrees of abstraction. She has had a number of solo exhibitions and have been a part of a large number of group, group exhibitions, both in Norway and internationally. She's also been commissioned to produce a number of public works in Norway, in Oskar Lillestrøm Holden Prison, and Bodø, amongst others. Irene Nolie graduated from Bergen Academy of Art and Design in 1996 and is currently teach, teaching at the Arts and Craft Departments at Oslo National Academy of Arts. And she has been awarded the Norwegian Government of Grants for Artists in 2010, which is now not here anymore, that grant, but we are very lucky to have it. And that's the difference. So welcome to Irene Nolie. Hej, hej, hej till Exxon som jag vet är här. Hej till Kio Students kollegor och mina tidigare professorer Hanne Hök och Nina Waldrö. It's great that you are here. Um, there are many possible questions, and here are some of the questions I have asked myself from the 1990s till today. Questions I have worked with to express myself and look for, answering and using uh, the same material, and yes, it's still clay and most of all porcelain. My first question was, uh, can I save the porcelain figure? Could I get into a tradition that I felt like nobody would relate to? And yes, it was 1990s and postmodernism. Um, the boundaries between high and low culture uh, were wiped out, and I turned my back to the vessel tradition that I had related to during my bachelor, and I decided to work with ceramics that everyone knew about, but did not have any expectations to. The porcelain figure, which I loved and collected in my own childhood. Uh, my mother cleared the attic and found my collection and uh, asked what to do with it. And I took it with me to Bergen, where I studied and investigated in how I could take this material further. So, <clears throat> the next question. How to challenge and make transitions uh, between the sweet, uh, sentimental, and the grotesque and unpleasant. Uh, the pink glaze over the rough clay was my language, and I quickly modeled the new figure so it became a distorted and exaggerated version of the one I had from my childhood. I really liked this process. Uh, it was like I was making them more real or adjusted them to the real world. I'm still investigating in this transition, searching for the exaggeration the distortion and the balance between the beautiful and the grotesque. To get to the source, to the place where I could pick and choose porcelain figures, I applied for a residency at Porskerun Porcelain Factory. And I asked, can I use your molds? Molds of figures that had been in production here for uh, more than a hundred years. They said yes. They was Paul Jansen. <laughs> and Han Höck had already opened the doors uh, for our, our students to, to go to uh, Porsgrunn and work there. Um, I removed every trace of the artist's hand and used the aesthetics of the factory, as if what I made looked like it was made there, or almost, more like the factory's defective production. My master, which was then called Hofag, 
was made there and it became a remix of Porsgrunn Porcelain's figures. I was interested in choosing more than creating, thinking that I was working on three-dimensional collages and the task was to put something together for something new to occur. Uh, how to make works with the formula one plus one equals three. This was also the time I heard about uh, the polarized melting for the first time. And our students, we just had a workshop at Porsgrunn Porcelain's factory, and uh, they know now what's possible there, and they also know what's left uh, of a big national uh, industrial treasure. It's not that much left, but there's some. After Porsgrunn, I continued with the, uh, to work with the figure and the question, how can I actualize and use the raw material from our surroundings and from popular culture and transform it into my own um, sketching? And why do I think the hybrid is so interesting? We see humans in the animal and we see the animal in the human being. And I found gra great satisfaction in making my own mythology, creating my own stories out of a common raw material that belongs to us all. <laughs> okay. I started to stage the figures and relate them to each other in an environment. Here in a cabinet, referring to the porcelain cabinet from the times when the object made of porcelain was seen as the most precious thing you could have. Photoshop and digital photography became a way to enlarge and place my work in different surroundings here in the landscape. Does it look like it belonged there? And gradually I started to make work that physically relates to the body. And together with Jon Roger Holte, we made sculptures and furniture, and how could we blend our work together? And what would we gain from that? The title of this work is Swan the Song, and it's made in 2005. It belongs to Kuda. And how to approach the porcelain doll? I made a series uh, with title Hanging Men, and hard porcelain heads met the soft textile bodies. And how can I identify myself with a porcelain doll? Myself as a porcelain doll and a hybrid. Hands and feet are castings from my own body. Like a human kangaroo, I did different investigation of motherhood, being <coughs> myself being a new mother, with the title Kengulan. And how do we experience sculpture? How can I add life to a sculpture in a concrete sense and give movement to the sculpture? So what I did, I actually put a little pump in the little one's stomach so the chest would rise and, and rise. <laughs> and so it will give like uh, uh, some kind of uh, yeah, breathing way. <clears throat> The small ballerinas on the, on the wall, they were rotating in different rotations. My own superheroes, Dear Man and Super Venus. Uh, what happens if you put yourself in the armrest of the decay superhero, touch the stars on his body, and listen to a review from the life of the hero, authored by Shartan Miller, with the voice of Ulf Nygård. <coughs> Ulf Nygård. I really regret throwing this work away be just because I didn't have a room for them. A working year <laughs> of my life ended up getting more. <laughs> and how can I transform something that is small and private and intimately to a large scale and take it out in the public space? I have had different approaches in my work with art in public space, but I always made work to touch, to sit, on, to use, to embrace, and to move around. Physical and tactile work, larger than yourself, larger than life. The making of Don't Be a Stranger, placed in front of Alskir Kulturus in 2006. 
And I still remember Lotte Kongolud said to me, I really like that rat you made. <laughs> and I was like, rat? <laughs> uh, but that's what they call it, actually. It's called the rat. But I, <laughs> I, I gave it another title, but I guess it's easier to call it the rat and don't be a stranger. Uh, so the porcelain plate from the home is crushed and used in the mosaic surface to find out what happens when you discover something you know from the private home as a, de as a detail in the surface of an outside sculpture. This culture title reason to hang around in Lillestrøm is placed in the street in front of the mall. Again, a small figurine as the starting point, a werewolf lying on the ground in a very feminine re Declining Venus pose, with its back to the consumerism, half asleep and half awake. And at night it's bathing in a red light. And if you touch it, you discover that it has a warming effect. It is actually warm. Monolist, I guess it's difficult to translate moonlight, maybe. Uh, is made for Halden Prism <coughs> in the garden of the visiting house where the family can meet for a day or two as a reward of a good behavior. And how could I make a sculpture of innocence for the children of the prisoners? I'm just going to show you some more of my public work. This is Jordid, made in Sonnefjord at the uh, Haukur of Skole. And this is, that was the river, this is the sea at Bodø Vidrigone Skole. And this is my latest, which I made this year. It's called Transform. It's uh, up in the north of Norway, Harstad. And it's for the children to climb through and investigate. I'm looking for these photos yesterday, I really saw the uh, similarities <laughs> with this one. So how can I enter the body and its inside? I return to the figure, but with the attention to let the abstraction take over, to get under the skin of the material, the body. And this uh, nice photo is Susanne, our student, uh, BA1 student, took in Bergen at Kode, where they have exhibited this work in a way I really liked. It's called Hanging Fair, and the exhibition was called A Place to be Lost. And how can I express a loss? The organic is a basic metaphor in all my works and has reference to the body, as the pot and the container always have. I returned to the vessel and made containers like solidified organisms, empty and hollow, as if they represent the memory of a function. And for me, the empty space became a room for the loss. Growing up is losing a childhood, a youth, a world of yesterday, and it's losing time. Big losses are almost unbearable and tears apart. My forms are assembled and built up with different fragments stacked on top of each other. Fragments represent the traces, remnants, and memories. There are physical impressions in the clay, surface with textures of bark, roots, and grapes that I process fur further. I made Chain of Sorrow at Fredrikstad's Technical Porcelain Factory, working with the molds for electric transformers that I got to use. So I started casting again, using in-colored porcelain slip. <coughs> How could I let the gravity become the main expression in this series? I opened the molds too early and let the shapes out too soon to let them deform and collapse when meeting the surface. Lately, I've become more interested in the physical and mental room, a room that you could enter and be a part of. Could I make the porcelain, porcelain room relevant again, and could, it, could I make my version of it? So this exhibition, The Porcelain Room, at Galerie Format, here in Oslo, I show my new sculpture stage as if the gallery was furnished for my work. My organic world of ceramic sculptures was arranged and merged with carpets, textiles, shelves, bench, chair, table, candles, and roofs. Everything built, burned, crushed, and put together. 
the porcelain figure dissolves and becomes more and more captivated by its own materiality. The recognizable body parts became interlaced bodily shapes. I release control and let the organic take over. I emphasize using bright colors and different glazes. For me, porcelain can represent the fragility, fragility of existence and how to emphasize it in this project. I built up impossible trembling structures that almost burst. And what happens when I invite the audience into this interior? Like a hint of imaginary space, reflecting history, destruction, and suffering from the outside world. The abstraction and resolution of known form can reflect a, re a primitive fear of the unknown in each of us. And in this project, I investigate the tension between such a resolution and a kind of overall experience with the historical and material references. This sculpture is covered with black lace. It lies like a body on a bed and the outer covering of which has been removed so that the sculpture lies directly on mattress stuffing. So how does the process influence the work? I need to create and be engrossed with the work process. The process is important and I work until I stop thinking. I'm just in it. I model, build, cast, search, find, rebuild, tear apart and put together in new ways. I explore clay in all forms, liquid, plastic, molded and modeled, wet and dry, soft and hard. I allow my hands to be wiser than my head. I allow my body to be involved in the decision making process. I am also often in doubt. I use different firings and glazes, firing things several times to achieve what I want with the surface. In the creation process, it's not simply that the work is in a physical space, it's also a separate mental room in its own right. A room I can, a room I am in, which I make plans for and which I can paint. So my last slide, or image. <laughs> And uh, I was really happy to see Phoebe's pr <laughs> presentation because uh, I also have some kind of flowers. Um, this is the porcelain vase with a painterly surface, like a three-dimensional painting using different glazes and pigments. And the vases and the seaweed merge. And this work will be shown here in Oslo at uh, Ram Gallery in just two weeks. And my last question is, will you come? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.